welcome welcome to hand lapping glass um <laughs> so next so this is uh, this is basically just a list of material um a plastic tray for each grit you don't want to be putting loose grit into a tray then cleaning it out and putting in a finer grit because just one little particle can ruin your piece so have have a tray for every piece of grit and have a um have a flat surface to put it on i have found that some of the trays that i've picked up um, like a bed bath and beyond things like that don't always have a super flat bottom and if your bottom curves at all then sometimes the flex glass that you grind on will also curve and you get an uneven grind so make sure that this lies flat it stays flat and it's not going to give you any distortion as you work through your piece there you go. So as you're describing it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so the, the tray that I've got here is actually the lid of a storage container that I bought for $5 at Home Depot this week. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can be creative and find all kinds of interesting things. But that one's a nice one because it has the grooves under it that kind of channel the water right. away. Is that, right. Is that advantageous? Yes. Yeah. I think so. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all an experiment. Right, right. Okay, yes. And then you just need a piece of float glass, um, one for each grid, and uh, hopefully size to fit your tray. And do take a hand pan to the edges and dull those down a little bit so that you don't inadvertently cut yourself when you start to work on this. <laughs> one for so what I have seen people do in the past that I um, find can solve problems and create problems is to do different grits on each side. Um, I've seen somebody do 220 on one side of the float and 120 on the other side of the float. If you get those mixed up, you can cause problems for yourself. So for the extra three, five dollars to get an extra piece of glass for each grit, I recommend that. Okay, um, duct tape. In the event that you need to make a small, a small um, kind of like a hand pad made out of float could could you switch yeah. over here so overhead. yeah so sometimes you're going to want a little piece of float here so that you can do this sort of movement with it on um, maybe a piece that doesn't fit in the tray or maybe something very small if it doesn't happen to fit your hand real well if you get some waterproof duct tape then you can make a little handle and kind of manage it that way. Okay. okay. Next presentation. Yep. So Kim, when you mark the glass so that you say, okay, this is my 120 grit glasses, this is my 220 or whatever. Right. Um, what do you mark it with? Because you know, water and Sharpie. I do a Dremel in a corner. Oh, so you just Dremel it in? Yay. I Dremel it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the marker isn't gonna last. I think that everybody needs a, they need one. They need a Dremel if they yes. don't have one. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yep. Next. Squirt bottle. Um, this is water to, so that you can keep your grit hydrated. It does tend to need water as you work it. And then a Sharpie marker. Um, if you've cold worked at all, you know that you put some marker on your glass so that you know whether you're using the um, diamond wheel or hand pads, you know when you're done. I'm not going to do that this evening in the interest of keeping this, you know, reasonably short, um, but it's a really good way to know that you have hit everything and that it's all smooth and it's all even and it really is the way it should be done. And that's on the piece of glass that you're polishing. Yes. Not the float glass. Yes. Right. Can you, can you just point with your finger where you would put that? I mean, I don't know. I've known, never. Where, where I would put the. Sharpie. Um, oh, the, the, the little notation for the grit. I'm no, just the writing. Sharpie. No, the Sharpie. Oh, the Sharpie. I'm so sorry. Yes. Yes. I, I would just do kind of like loose scribbles. Okay. You don't have, you don't have to code it. You just okay. have to get enough on there so that if you have a high corner or a low area, you'll see it. Thank so it's you. just, yeah, you know, some little scribbles back and forth. Well, what will happen is after each grit level, um, you'll, you know you're done with that grit level when the Sharpie disappears. Right. Thank you. That's clever. And it tells you if you have unevenness. 
Um, okay, so next. Do you want the presentation? Yeah. We're using our switcher tonight, so we're, we're getting kind of, we're getting practiced here, so thank you guys. Yeah, appreciate your forbearance. Um, I buy my grit through either Helios or hisglassworks.com. They are the guys to go to for all things cold working. They're amazing. They're helpful. Um, if you have any questions, call them up. Somebody will talk to you for an hour if that's what it takes to explain what you need. And so silicon carbide grit is inexpensive. And these are pound bags, which means that they, you know, that little bag will sit in your, in your palms um, together. So it's, it's, it's going to be good for probably three, five projects depending on the size of everything. So you don't have to spend a ton of money in order to get into this. And same with the, um, the bands for the wet belt sander, the higher the grit, the more expensive they are. So this ranges from $4 to almost $8, 60 grit up to 600 grit. I always thought that was strange because I, it took me a while to get used to the fact that the lower number was coarser. coarser. Right, right. And that the higher number is fine. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. You ready for the next one? I am ready for the next one. Okay. Pumice and cerium. I don't do this way. I take these over to the electric diamond wheel and I do the pumice. It comes in different grades. I use very fine. That comes after 600. And um, I've never tried to hand lap this. I forget why I don't do it that way. Um, but you definitely can't do cerium this way because you need the heat that the friction of the wheel builds up and it causes the chemical reaction that actually gives you the glass that's high gloss that cerium will give you. So there's no way that you can get your glass hot enough in order to get that high shine. So that's on a wheel. All right. All right. I don't think so. Okay. So this is my little piece that I am going to work on. Um, I started this week on the 60 grit and the 120, and I'm, I'm about to do 220 now. I did the 60 and the 120 earlier in the week because they are so noisy that you would just be plugging your ears and running away. So I'm going with a quieter 220 grit because it's already passed through 60 and 120. So this is 220 grit. So Kim, how do you know how much grit to put down and how wet to make this? That may be one of my problems. Maybe, Jenny. Um, I just kind of do it by feel and by eye. Um, my piece isn't huge, so I don't need a whole large area here. And I do want it to be pretty loose. I don't want a paste. I want a slurry. And so it needs to be a little bit wet. Um, it is going to dry out and change a little bit and break down as you work it. So you will keep on adding it until your grit is done. So this is wet. Uh, I could probably use a little bit more. Grit more, more grit and more water. Yeah. Yeah. Great way to wreck your hands and you'll have grit under your nails for days. So this looks good to me. So if you move your glass in a figure eight motion, you are going to get even wear. I, I kind of move back and forth between figure eight and circles. I also rotate the glass to promote even wear. So, Kim, we have an online question about yes. wearing a mask while you're doing this. Do you normally do that? I do not do because the silicon carbide for one thing, it's heavy. It's not an airborne particle if um, when you're working this way, plus it's wet. Um, it's probably a good safety just precaution, but I don't worry about that too much. Um, not like I do when the silicon carbide is in the sandblaster. 
and you open the door and that stuff kind of comes out into the air. A mask is never a bad idea. I'd say if you're actually moving grit from one container to another and it's right. airborne. Right, if you're pouring it, yeah. Did we talk about like, using different trays, different trays for different trays? Right, so, different trays, different, um, different pieces of float glass. I use quarter inch float glass. Um, anything thinner tends to buckle a little bit. Oh, you know what I forgot? Would you um, fill a bucket with um, like yay much water? Yeah. I, f I forgot a, a dunk bucket so <laughs> that I can put this in water and rinse it in between grits. So this actually um, moves along pretty quickly. Ah, oh, here we go. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Perfect. Thank you. I've been doing this long enough that I can tell by looking by feel when it's ready for the next one. And this one isn't yeah. there yet. Um, and if I had marker on this, it wouldn't be quite gone. Um, I do have a low area here. When you're, when you're doing that look and feel sort of thing, I, you, so you talked about you can see there's a little divot in that one spot. Are uh -huh. there other things you're looking for? Is it like you're looking for an evenness of scratches or is it more by feel or how You're not going to see scratches, Jenny, like you do with hand pads or a wheel. You're not going to see those lines. You're going to see more like a um, um, a stucco surface okay. that gets finer and finer through each grit. And you want an evenness in the stucco. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And my eternal problem seems to be having my corners come a little high. Mm. And silly question we have, um, where did you get your trays? What's, what's a good source for the tray that you're putting that in? This is the lid of a container, uh, uh, like a, it's a, three, container. a three gallon container from Home Depot that ran me about six or seven dollars. Okay. Um, I really like this. I'll bring it up since I'm the good thing. Yes, please. So what I do when I have problems getting everything perfectly even is I switch to this method and I just polish it with a piece of float glass. All right, ready? All right, anybody who's curious, this is uh, Home Depot. So you can see they have all these different sizes of containers and they all have that lid. So that's what that lid is from. And I just put a little piece of masking tape on it and mark it with the grit that I'm using it. And then when I'm done with this, I sort of move the slurry <laughs> over into a little slotted area so that it can dry and not, I'll see if I can recover it for my next use. How much slurry did you put on the float? How much what? How much slurry? slurry did you put on the float? That was like a good handful, handful and a half. <coughs> okay, thank you. And you'll see how it moves to the edges as you yeah. work. You just kind of have to recollect it. And, and bring it back. I had asked the other day about trying to save the grit. Mm -hmm. And I know you had a good answer for that. The grit breaks down. You will end up being able to feel your way through knowing that it's time to add more grit because it's just not feeling as draggy and as abrasive as it was. And that applies less to 200, 400, things like that. But when you're at 60 and 120, you can really feel it when the particles break down, they become smaller, and you have all of a sudden gone from 120 to maybe 150, because everything's a little smaller. But I guess to my question was, do you try and save the grit to oh, save money? No. 
No. I assume that you would try and like fish it out of the bottom of the bucket and you know put it through systems. Not me. I've never heard of anybody doing that. Has anybody tried that? Well, when a little what, reclaim reclaiming grit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I that, reuse it. But like reclaiming it out of the bottom of your wash bucket. And Kim's answer. No, I'm sorry. No, never. <laughs> no. <laughs> way, way too much work. But Kim's answer was really good, and it relates back to this slide right here. $4, $5, $7. Right. What's your time right. worth? You could, it, you could make yourself crazy. Yeah. So I'm going to dunk this and move on to the next grit. So, Tim. Yes. When you're cleaning up your grit, I, 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 you know, I know, I think we all know this doesn't go down the drain. Um, like some of this, do you just like wash off into the backyard? Do you wait till it dries and just put it in a garbage bag? How do you how do you dispose of the goo? It's really have? heavy stuff, so it sinks to the bottom. And I, I'm not sure what the disposal protocol is around here, but at home, I just let the water evaporate out of the bucket and then scoop it up into a bag and put it in my trash. It's not toxic, um, but it's probably not exactly environmentally friendly either. I don't think you want to put it down your sewer, down your drains, down your pipes, down anything like that, because it's so heavy and it'll collect. Yeah, it's not going to wash. Wow. Do you need a little piece of float glass for each grit? Yes. 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 Not the big one, the little one that you did on top. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Why are you using uh, silicone oxide? What about aluminum oxide? I've never tried it, Richard. I do not know. Um, I have, I yeah, I have no experience with that at all. That's what I use in a sandblaster. Right. And it gives a nice surface. Of course, it depends on the grit, but I think I'm using a 220. Mm -hmm. And it's seems fine. I mean, I, I could go higher, I suppose. And I, I do have a wheel, but right. um, I'm just curious why the silicon dioxide. Or silicon carbide. It's, oh, it's, carbide. Yeah. It's the only thing I've used. Um, just because that's what's available here. Yeah, it's, it's what's available. It's what's handy. It's, it's what I'm accustomed to. Um, I took a cold working class once from um, Jane Bruce, who said that in a perfect world, you also have a rubber apron for every grit, oh, so that you don't right right so you don't right. contaminate your hands or your work surface by having a dirty apron on. Wow. Yeah, Paul said that too. I mean, they have like clean rooms. Yeah. Is that a painted surface that you're uh, working on? Is it a painted surface? No, the piece of uh, glass. Oh, it's quarter inch float and the color. No, no, you're the glass, the glass in oh. your left hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> is it what is? Is it painted? Is the no. design painted? No, the no. no, the design goes through it. <laughs> so if the design, <laughs> if the design were painted, would you be able to do this? I doubt it. It would. Oh, it, right. it would. It would come off really fast. Now, well, you know, though, another thought is if you had sandblasted the design into a piece of glass, painted it, and then cold worked the top off, it would stay in the recesses if it had been sandblasted. Well, funny you should say that. Uh oh. Because. I, that. <laughs> I mean, I meant to say that. Such a, such a funny a, thing happened on the yeah. way to the kiln today. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a piece that I did years and years and years ago in Jeremy Lepisto's class. And this was finished by hand to 600 with uh, silicon carbide grit. And then I put a raises stencil on top of it that had been um, exposed through, um, is it ultraviolet? Yeah. And then sandblasted right. that. And so then um, Rouché Tracers Black went on this in a very thin layer and then carefully 
cleaned it off so that the sandblasted retained the pigment and nothing else did. That's awesome. So this was six surfaces all the way up to 600 by hand. Oh my goodness. Right? But it was awesome. Then and you were very calm and. and I, I like you know, doing it. Yeah. I really like doing it. You were in your happy place. Did we talk about all the blocks you did? No. <laughs> Jen fell in love with this technique yeah. years ago when she, well, I remember it was one of the first times I had met Kim. She showed up at the studio with these like type blocks. Oh, I can't get it because I'm oh, wired wait, up. I could possibly get it. Okay. Um, Keep it, demo away. Okay. <laughs> See, now I'm up to 400 and this is silent. All of that gritty noise has gone away and it's more like a very fine paste. And and it feels really good in your hands. It's almost like if you're a ceramicist, you know what slip feels like? That's what this is. It's like slip. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really cool. I just found out about slip. In the <laughs> box there, there should be a little package that has got some um, color blocks that or wow. type blocks that I forgot to unwrap. So... so so yeah, Jenny. Is, uh, since you were talking about this feeling more like slip, is that that you, is it just, I, I think I'm wondering, do you add more or less water at this point? Or is that just a, a function of because it's finer, it feels different, you're not adding more or less water? I'd say it's about the same. Okay. I'd say it's about the same. And I think this does not break down as fast because it's already pretty fine. So you might get a little bit more life out of it than you do some of the other coarser grits. But Kat's got... Oh yeah, I have one of her blocks. Kat's got blocks. I, I went on a binge one year and I was doing um, typography in glass. I was casting little squares and then I hand finished 200 of these so that I could put them into two California job cases, the old fashioned type drawers. Um, and I did, um, it, it was basically a statement about how we are losing things that have been written and printed and on the back of each one of these little letters is something that has been almost, almost removed by the internet, like postcards and handwritten letters. And on the back of one of them, I put my grade school uh, report card from fourth grade when I had a D in math um, <laughs> and newspaper, okay. newspapers. And so it, it, it was a statement about how um, communications are leaving our hands. And the title of the piece was when we could touch the words. And I worked on these for probably almost a year. And I literally did 200 blocks, six sides each. And um, they were really small. So I just kind of set up a bucket in my living room and I would sit there and watch TV. And because they were small, I could just use, you know, one of the, one of those kind of tubs that you put in your sink to wash dishes. So I had one for each grit and I just sit there and I do this and watch television. And uh, awesome. it, it was, it was not awful. You're an <laughs> artist. <laughs> <laughs> my husband would look at me and just kind of roll his eyes. And it's okay. You know, <laughs> he's an artist too, but you know, you're a glass artist. I'm a so. messy artist. He, he's a neat artist. And boy, well, I never, you know, but, but his medium is neat. Yes. What do you got? You don't even have snippets anymore. <laughs> you, you have no editorial film cut on the floor right. anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, uh, Kim's husband is a video producer. So he, uh, he does basically digital video and the camera work. He's, and so, he's so clean. <laughs> he is really clean. Right? And he's <laughs> organized. And, but they're working together on the new videos. So Kim's watercolor glass is a joint project with Larry. And mm -hmm. cool, so. well, you people do not have any money. What? <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm playing poker. Gonna say, Carrie, we can hear every word you say. Yeah, I'm, I'm like out of there. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So this is feeling like 400, except for this corner. Um, so, so I would, in a perfect world, I, I would work on this a little bit by hand again, 
and use the small piece in order to get that just a little bit less uh, textured. Um, and do you also do the edges with the um, with yes. grit? Yes, yes, yes. And oh, glad you mentioned that because especially with the uh, um, larger grit, the coarser grit, keep your hand pads with you and take down these edges every once in a while because as you grind, they will become super sharp and that is stress and you can get little crumbles, you can break off corners. So, you know, keep, keep these edges curved just a tiny, tiny bit as you work through these processes so you don't have unexpected breakage. So Kim, how do you do that when you do, I mean, on the hand lap, that's, that's easy, but um, how do you do that when you're doing this? Do you use the little piece of glass to do the edges or do you? Diamond hand pad. Diamond hand pad. Oh, as you're going, yeah. so you use both. Oh, so yeah. I've got you doing diamond hand pads too. All right. And, and just coordinate your grits, right? I know, because Jenny loves her diamond hand pad. I, I yeah, do. coordinate your grits. It's and a that's going to be especially important when you do the edges. A lot of times I will do the edges on the diamond wheel um, because I'm going to put a sealer on those anyway. But uh, for my surfaces, yeah, yeah, keep these edges just a little bit soft so that they don't carry any stress. That's a good way to put it. A concept yeah. that even woodworking, you ease your edges because that's- Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to do the edges in the front and the back, would you do all of the same grit before moving on or would you oh, do- Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So okay. you don't inadvertently scratch one surface while you're working on another that is okay. um, a higher grit. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, do them all yeah. together. If you're going to use the electric lap though on the edges, which would you do first, the edges or the front? Um, I usually do the edges first. Okay. Because that goes a little bit faster. Okay. Thanks. I think it could go either way though. <clears throat> That's just personal preference. Okay. I think on my edges, I'm always using the wet belt sander, but it can work first if I don't have my Yeah. Oh. Right. I'm yeah. not a fan of the wet belt sander. Really? Not really. Oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Bathmatic. If it was a wet belt sander that um, had a flat surface for you to put your glass on instead of the curve of the um, what's oh, it the called wheel. The, the wheel, wheel the wheel itself, yeah. you can't really get a super flat edge on that wheel because you're only oh, it, you know. But there are sanders that have a plate built there so that you can actually get a super crisp nice, super clean edge. Um, so I'm, I'm not a fan, not even for things that are only a quarter of an inch. Or we just take off and go over to Carrie's house and play in her new studio. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Carrie's, gonna, I, Carrie's gonna get I all have, the- uh, Well, I have, I have something that is not great, but I mean, it's a tabletop wet belt. I love the wet belt sander only because it does curved surfaces right. Um, right. better. Uh, uh, that's the only reason. Um, I also like using, you know, a crystal master and, um, and also this technique is beautiful. And so, um, yeah, I think Paul gave, if someone asked about how careful are you and you guys talked about it, but I think Paul talked about the lens for one of the huge Hubble telescopes. It took, it was in a kneel and it was in the kiln for years. <laughs> and um, I think that there was one tiny little scratch. No, that, that was a power blip. Their entire, was, yeah. I thought that was the, the power blip that, that happened while they were kneeling. It was literally halfway I, through like a three year anneal or a year and a half. Oh anneal. my God. <laughs> it may have been, but it was also, I thought he was talking about grit and uh, contamination. So, but regardless whether it was an interruption in an electrical thing or whether right. it was a human thing, um, you, you never want, you always want to be finished <laughs> and right. you, you, know, you want to be clean. So, so right. that's just, yeah, Actually, whatever. one of the questions I have, since they're using a, a common bucket after every grit level, how quickly does that stuff sink? Because my, my fear, when we do that at the mm -hmm. studio, I like 
dunk it in the bucket, and then I'll go rinse it off in the sink, you know, that we're allowed to, you know, right. there's no on it. Right. Because I'm afraid that the grit from the previous right. round has not sunk out of the way. Right. Do you worry about that? Um, I'm kind of stuck with the bucket right now because my microphone is tied to the <laughs> to, to, to the computer. <laughs> yeah, so, I've, got, I've got Kim on a leash right here. I, I, I can't run to the sink, but you're right. <laughs> I, I would dunk and then put it in um, clean water. Okay. Definitely. So I also can wanted I, to start... um, Can I ask a quick question? Please. How, do you, how do you mask, for example, the letters so that you have uh, you know, the, the satin uh -huh. with the shiny, because uh -huh. doesn't the grit rub or wear off the mask? These were sandblasted. Ah. So a friend of mine who has a Cricut, um, the little decal maker. Yeah, yeah. That, that cuts vinyl. She cut my letters for me. Oh, okay. So, the, so, so you can't probably really do this with the hand. Um, mm -hmm process because you have to apply pressure which would right essentially wear off the mask yeah. is that I, correct right i don't see how you could you would end up okay mask yeah thank, thank you very yeah. much sure good question though. yeah um so this is a piece that um is one of a series of five and mm. this these were entirely done with the little piece of float in my hand because they were too big to fit in a tray so I just work these all, you know, inch by inch with these little pieces. And I just did this for, um, you know, days at a time because there were five of them. Um, Ooh, I have an idea. Yes. Take a little awesome. coat and then get like a cabinet handle from Home Depot and hot melt glue it to it. That's a good idea. So you basically make your own yeah. sanding. You know. Right. Ooh, what? good idea. Handle. Hey, yeah. 3D printed if we got to yeah. over engineer and, you know. Yeah. So it's my personal opinion that hand lapping actually goes faster than doing it on the diamond wheel. Um, and, and I just like it, you know, put your earphones on, turn off the phone and just kind of groove with your glass for a little bit of time. It's, I, I find it meditative and calming. <laughs> um, I like, I like that statement, groove with your glass. <laughs> okay. so I think I need to go up on the board. Uh, I'll, I'll write it right now, Jenny. I'm yeah. here at the studio. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, that needs to go up on the board. I think, no, I think it's a t-shirt. <laughs> yes. She's writing it down. Groove with your glass. I think it is a t-shirt, Carrie. Thank you. Just a little credit, yeah. but no profit of the sales. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if I was going to keep going with this, I would throw a little bit more grit on here, a little bit more water and keep going, and then scrape up, you know, what I can from around the edges, because it all squidges out. No. Is squidge a t technical term? It is. Definitely. Okay. That's why it, it is. It's a professional technical term. <laughs> yeah. Wait, which means that they, uh, Jenny taught us a new word today. Yeah. Jenny, what was that word you taught us? Almaturge. What was it? <laughs> Almaturge. Almaturge. I'm it's, sorry. That just really sounds bad. It, it does, but it actually means like, uh, I was talking about a programmer who's one of those kind of guys who, you know, you'd be in meetings and he would say over and over and over, can't be done, can't be done, can't be done. You're like, yeah, yeah, right. Because you knew in a couple of days he'd come, come back with this thing completely programmed up with, you know, like two mild bugs, maybe a moderate one at most, which he would have resolved in a day. And his business card, you know, said he was a, a programming thaumaturge. And it's, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, maker of miracles and a magician. Magician, <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. wonders. And it, with this guy, it was true. Yeah. Well, and I think uh. that with Tim Burl, it's kind of true, too, if you think about it. So, so just sitting here talking, th this stuff dried out a little bit. And when I went to start moving the glass over it, it was super sticky. And the glass was dragging, so I had to add a little bit of water because it, it wasn't moving. So it will dry out. And if you're living in Denver, it'll dry out faster than if you're in Texas. For sure. Oh my gosh. If you're living in Arizona. Right. 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 
in Florida. Yeah, and if you're in up. Houston, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't even have to use water. Right, exactly. You just sprinkle it out in the air and it works. Yeah. Brings the water with it as it's coming down. <laughs> hey Kim. Um, yes. Yeah, when years in, ago I took a class um, <coughs> from Nathan Sandberg. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. um, it was a uh, kiln um, kiln casting class. But he, on these finer grits, he would add like a little drop of soap, um, dish soap that would kind of cut the surface tension so it would slide a little better. Interesting. Wow. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah I like time, that. Hard time picking like, it up. Like, like just Dawn detergent or something like yeah. that? Right, right. I'm going to remember awesome. that. Awesome. Awesome. The other thing that I do, since most of the stuff I do, well, I always tempt fate. I use one piece of glass. Um, that I oh, wash. is that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. I just wash it off really good between things. Uh huh. But I usually use the method with the glass, like the glass pad on the top. Glass in your hand. Yeah. And what I do is I, um, long time ago, I I basically created a or fused a block like the size of a diamond hand pad, so you mm -hmm. get a grip on it. Uh huh. It lasts for a really long time. It eventually wears down, obviously. That's but a really good idea. Scrap glass for yeah. kind of a good sanding pad. Yeah. I like Kat's idea of hot gluing a, a handle to the, that thing. I was, I was just like fall off pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I want, I'm thinking, you know, pieces of art there who diamonds, what, I guess, cast your diamond pads. Essentially. So, so your cast hand pad made out of glass, was that bullseye glass? Because I've only used float for this kind of thing. I actually used um, a bunch of scrap tech stuff. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, somebody gave me for free this box of it. So I, I cast this huge, you know, about 10 inch long, maybe two inch thick chunk, and I slice off pieces of it to make uh -huh. that. Fantastic That's a idea. really good idea. I'm going to borrow that. You um, grooves in the side of it too. To yeah. Of the other thing I have a problem with sometimes is, especially with the finer grits, the grit will get stuck in like a bubble. You ever have that problem? Like a bubble yeah. between the float and the piece? Well, no, like a bubble. No, in the piece. It, oh. It's, it's oh. Yeah. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, really, really hard to get out. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? Well, what do you do? there used to be that hose attached to the sandblaster compressor yeah. that had high pressure. You know, it was like a little nozzle, and I would just make sure right. that everything was super dry. And you could usually sandblast or um, air yeah, hose that stuff out, yeah. but it was really high pressure. Yeah. Um, you know what I have had some success with is using a Sonicare toothbrush. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes that super high vibration will just bring those little particles to the top of some water. Water pick might help too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, there's that new one that is a water pick and Sonicare together in one. <laughs> oh, man. Hey. I don't need that much hygiene. Right? You know? <laughs> uh, so something that I saw that I haven't tried at the cold shop at Pilchuck they have taken all of their pieces of float and they have cut on the um, tile saw maybe a sixteenth of an inch grid just cut into the float so that you have slight recesses i mean it's sort of like like this a checkerboard on each piece of glass so that the grid has a place to go down into um uh -huh. and i'm not sure what like the object a yeah you look at a diamond pad, it's got that pattern yeah what's the reason I'm not sure, but every single one of their pieces of glass in their cold shop had this done to it. Can yep. you ask? Don't you know somebody there? Come on, you know somebody. I do know somebody there. Well, I know somebody but who could, be there. We, could we see the why? So would you report back on the why? Yeah, I will try to find out. That's, okay. I, I would think you would, would that, that the edges of that glass might then dig into your piece. But <laughs> it, does is it keeps the grit from going off the sides all the time. It kind of, yeah. I think it kind of builds up in there and it'll come back up for you. 
Mm. I think that's what it's doing. Because I thought about the same thing with my little hand pads, which I've done, but uh -huh. it seems like a way to maybe keep it more on the top of the piece of glass yeah. and grinding. Yeah. Ooh. They might be pretty interested in keeping, um, you know, everything confined and as clean as can be when you've got, you know, hundreds or thousands of students coming through in a session. Right. A no, summer. Another thing I've seen, and this is totally off topic, but the other day I saw a YouTube video, because that's what we do during COVID, is we look at stupid YouTube videos. But there was some guy who was making his own work mats. Like he was actually making oh. one out of wood and then sealing it and then pouring silicone on it. Really? So it had a grid on the bottom. It was a measuring grid, but for this right. it would hold grit. And then he could make it and size it. Interesting. I watched that same video. <laughs> Did you watch the make a Dyson fan out of scrap lumber? I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know. I'm just, yeah, that's just me right now. Jeez. Oh, and I'm going to show you guys. There is another thing. This, of course, because I always interject these things. Um, this is called a glass brush, and enamelists use it. Whenever they grind something, they'll use this brush to get stuff out of the the uh, pores, I guess, huh. before firing it again. I don't know if that would help in anything like this, but you use them in enamel. In Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, just thoughts. All right. Oh, let me see if I can find past notes. Let's see. Jenny, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you over to the dark side. <laughs> I don't know. You got to protect the I don't know. fingernails. See, you'll I, never get her on a wet belt, wet, wet belt, Sandra. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh man, you know in the old oh, studio God. that that well, it, it's just I call it bathmatic, and particularly oh, the the bathmatic. <laughs> I love that. The amount of water that came out of that. I kept thinking I needed one of those old, you know, New England Maritimer bright yellow. You know, rain ponchos and the big hat. Like the Gordon yeah, No, that's why I, they yeah. had the Newfoundland there. They had the Newfie there to rescue you. I yeah. actually have one of those. I, I, you know, and some of it I wonder is because I'm so short, I wonder if the water that as it comes out just hits me differently. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, Jenny. Everybody hey, gets wet. Everybody got wet. <laughs> but, you know, when, it, when, <laughs> the new studio, the water's not coming out as hard, so it's not quite as bathmatic. But you know, I had a pair of boots in the car because I would just come out so drenched from yeah. the that yeah. right. I'm like, I'll oh. do it. Give me my diamond hand pads. It's just all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Look yes, that. Jenny, That's what we needed. Jenny. That's what I needed in the old studio. Are you looking at like the kids' size? <laughs> oh no! I was. It was the petite lady section in Amazon. So well, it might be the right height, but man, after pandemic, that ain't the right width anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I finally had to break down and get a trainer. So, uh, like, oh god, that COVID fifteen, right? God, at least fifteen. Yeah, I think we need a T-shirt with Jenny. I'm happy to announce that I have lost twenty three pounds. <laughs> Good oh for you. God. Good for you. Good grief, woman. Thanks. How do you manage that during a pandemic? Noon. Noon. Right there. Well, but I get to walk every day, you know. Oh, it's like, cool. well, I, I get I to walk, walk with down Winnie, here. But, but Winnie walks so slowly that if you're wearing a Fitbit, it doesn't always register. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can understand that. Well, no, it's it's that Carrie lives above a winery, so Carrie can like walk <laughs> to the winery. I mean, I, I do. I know. I walk, I, I walk in the winery every morning. Well, <laughs> when I walk, that includes my route. Uh, I don't get to imbibe every morning, you know, or whatever. They're not open, but the, it's open, and I do. I take if I will circle the vineyard interior, you know, along the wall. Uh, and then walk back up to my house. It's a little over four miles. Wow. And that's, okay. and that's a hilly area, too. So that's a lot of... 
Up yeah, and down. no, there's some, there's some, uh, Fitbit is like going, hey, cool, you're in the cardio burn area. And I'm like, no, I don't really care about that. I'm dying here. <laughs> okay, so for if anybody is curious, I don't know which direction it is, but Carrie lives on a hill <laughs> right above the winery. So <laughs> it's terrible to live above a winery, I can yeah. tell you. So it's like um, we are northwest of Austin, about 45 minutes. We're on the north shore of Lake Travis. Uh huh. Hold on. Get up right now. <laughs> Sorry. And, can... and everybody, I'm not quite ready. I have started. Somebody, some sweet person, made a comment on the Facebook post. Well, gosh, your your studio looks ship shaped to me and all squared away. I'm like, oh Lord, I haven't brought down anything. <laughs> all I did was take a picture when the painting was done and I did it because it's going to look like trash pretty soon so now I it does look like trash I have started moving stuff down so I could really use is anybody on this call a good, a good organizer <laughs> because uh, I'm not I am not I'm, I'm I don't know where to put stuff. I got, you know, I have limited space. And so I'm open to, I'll buy lunch at the vineyard if anybody is good organizer. You have to walk come. there? No, you can go. I'll, I'll drive you down there. <laughs> okay, the airport is out over here on this side of Austin. You can fly in with the person. <laughs> Fly in and it's over here by the lake and it's a lovely, lovely. And you can stay there. And you can stay at my place too if you're coming from out of town. It's all okay. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> and I'll attest to that because she bought us lunch and I haven't helped. So, Gary, <laughs> I'm appealing to you, uh, local people, <laughs> like Jenny. I, I, Jenny, Jenny is my like. Jenny could do this. I only know how to have intentions to get organized. I only, I, I know how to buy the containers and the boxes and the little parcels oh, and things, and that's as far I as did it that. I did that, Kim. You're no help. I got that. <laughs> Wait, I have to point out though. I have to point out that that Kim did buy a storage container. I can't turn my computer around to show it, but she bought the storage <laughs> container and then turned it into a cold working surface. Well, there you go. Well, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. in the container just saying well i brought my shit <laughs> oh okay oh yeah i brought Dang my it. stuff I guess well, we didn't have to see that I, I you're the one. only person i know who's bought a container for the lid <laughs> <laughs> and you did it more than once apparently but you know what kirsten i really thought that i was going to be able to get a um uh, a pan <laughs> for your hot water heater you know oh, yeah. are, those are cute but they were like i got a, i got i have five of those but you can't find them anymore exactly right. they were only uh -huh. the metal ones with the plug on the side and they were 27 dollars yeah, no. so well, that's we, nuts isn't it if we yeah buy a sheet for what break and we we invest in one we can make our own ah. after, after we recover our grit I think Kat should 3D print them. Ooh. There you go. Working on it now. So, hey, Kim, go back to when you were working on the long piece that wouldn't fit into a tray. Right. You weren't doing that in your living room. No, I was doing that here. Oh, at the studio. I was doing it here at the studio, and I just put a large sheet of plastic over my Morton board. Yep. And, uh. and I laid it down and then just went to town on it. And I would go and rinse off the plastic with every grit change. So yeah. I, I guess I thought that maybe the studio had a nice bathtub because you guys spend a lot of time there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they have a hot, they have hot tubs. I was just saying, you know. Betty was talking about the bathomatic in the back. We just used the belt sander. <laughs> oh boy. So. Carrie, you want, you want to talk about organizing. I spent three hours the other day sorting through the kiln furniture and trying to organize it by size and shape. 
Well, that's why I think that you should come over and I'll, <laughs> I'll buy you lunch. And when when he's welcome, she can come too. So I know I was, my limitations and I know my friends. I know my so, limitations. So. I'm going to try that on Larry. He's going to ask me to do something. I'll say, I know my limitations. <laughs> exactly. One must know their limitations. Yes, you guys and, if, and if someone really loves you, they will yes. accept that. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, um, so an update since everybody kind of is aware that my dad is living in my art studio. He got a glass splinter in his foot yesterday. He and what? He, he what? A glass splinter in his foot. Oh. oh. I have to explain to him. It's like, well, dad, you're living in my art and glass studio. There's glass in there. You know, if you're going to live there, it's just <laughs> something that you need to learn to live with. Don't go barefoot. <laughs> Don't go barefoot, Dad. Oh, but that didn't go over well. <laughs> it didn't go over, no. Oh, gosh, no. But, uh, I'm good. surprised it took him so long to find it. No kidding. <laughs> really? Um, me too. It was a drought line, but uh, anyway, it's all good. Oh. And over there, uh, I noticed you have a round one over there, too. You have a round piece. A round piece, yes. Yeah, like yes. on the round piece, like on the edges. Did you do the edges? I did the edges. I did the edges on the uh, diamond wheel. Oh. I did the edges on the diamond wheel. I don't think there is any conceivable way you could do this with grit. Oh. It would be so difficult to turn oh, man. Um, the way that you should. It's hard enough to do on the diamond wheel, right? And to keep right. from getting facets on your edge. So that is I, where that that's where the wet belt sander comes in. No, no, <laughs> because it's because this is so thick it would it would give me a curved edge. I would no. never get a super flat edge, but on the wheel, you can get that super flat edge. On the on the on the um, wet belt sander. What I'm did sorry? you say again? So you <laughs> hold it vertically on the wet belt sander instead of exactly exactly like you're that. you're there and and it bends you can you can lean into it and it gives well you just changed my life <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> wow <okay. laughs> i've yeah, never seen just, anybody do yeah. that yeah yeah that's kind of what you kind of I mean, and, and, it, and that's what is so beautiful about it. It gives, and you can yeah. keep your little circle. Yeah. Right? Okay, I'm going to try that next time I have a uh, Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. okay. I'm way over-engineering it because, you know, like, like if you're on a lathe or something, you have to find the center, and, you know, then you could rotate it, maybe build right. a fixture for it. Right. Am I over-engineering? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Probably. It's good. I love that piece, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's awesome. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Um, wants to know what well, you're going to do. I submitted it for Emerge and it got turned down. What? Um, but oh, oh, they're so cool. That's, That's what I thought. Nuts. That's okay, what I thought. So, but, you, but you know what? That year, the stuff was really, really, really good. Um, all right. Well, so, so. you know, hey. But this got, me, this got me started looking at the backsides of my high fires. And right. And, and so, you know, it started out like this, which is all well and good, but uh, this was cool. No, I like that. I like that. So what are you going to do with it? You didn't answer the question. <laughs> um, I think it involves I'm probably going to keep this one forever, but I have other things I could be persuaded to part with. <laughs> all so right, fine. This one came after that. Again, looking at the, at the back sides, you know, this is my front side. But, yeah. But this, this is cool. I love this. I did 12 of mm -hmm. these. Um, okay. And it's really too bad that you can't see it in person because a lot of this is opaline and you can actually yes. see into it. Ah. And it's, okay. it, it's cloudy. Because on the, on, on the camera, the other side in this one is attention grabbing yeah. because of the cut that runs through that's the amber. And but, you have the cascade, but if you can see the opaline on the other side, that's where being in person is yeah. like, oh. Yeah. And and I got you, bored. Um, I got bored silly with this stuff. I, I was ready okay. to do something else. 
What did about you, an orange? The, did you do those with the pressed glass method or are those pot melts? Um, neither. Okay. Neither, neither. They're very high temperature. Um, a single firing, and that's really all I can say. Um, okay. I won't, I won't ask for secrets. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pushes the limits of her kiln and yeah. some. Yeah. I had a guy, a guy hacked my kiln for me so that it would go higher than it really should. Um, so it's, it's not it's a beautiful. safe way to fire. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes things happen and, you know, who knows? Yeah. Right. So, Kristen, mm, cool. Question. Wait, Kristen? Yeah. Oh, you had a question. You started to ask a question. Yeah, I was wondering what about it bo became boring? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, did, I did it for three or four years, and right. it got predictable. And all I could do was change the color palette a little bit. Mm. And I just felt like I had learned everything I could. Well, there you go. That'll do it. And it was time to move on. It was time to move on. But to retain what you got because there's essences of it that come through now. I love the back side. That was harder to figure out than it was to figure out the front side. I'm still not there yet. Mm. Wow. I'm looking for something here real quick. That's scary, Kat. <gasps> What's that? I'm looking for something? Yeah. No, 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 no. No, it's nothing. Crazy. Oh, there it is. Can I show them your round thing that you, your sample thing? Sure. Oh my God. Okay. Because this is what? what I love about working with Kim and her stuff. Because I look at this and go, oh my God, that's a masterpiece. And she says, oh, it was just a, it was a test tile. Okay. <laughs> there right. we go. Right. That, okay. I was like, I just, I absolutely love that. Yeah. Like when, when's the class? Where do I sign up? <laughs> well, well, yeah, I love that too. Just the yeah. colors and the lines are amazing. Yeah. So it's it's going to make an appearance in my enamels tutorial. In the enamels tutorial. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So can you, at this point, are you willing to say how many layers of glass that is thick? Oh, that it. Well, you can count them. Oh, um, this one right here. Yeah, it's on a piece of tecta, and so it's driftwood, turquoise. Robin's egg, one, two, three, four, five, six, six seven. 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 And and so my processing temperature was 1490 for um, an hour and it got pretty darn flat. So, so, so you did not dam that at all. I did not. Yeah. Okay. You said it was right. seven, seven layers. Right. Seven layers, seven. yeah. One, two, three, Stacked. four, five, six, seven. On seven awesome. on top of Tecta, so a total of eight. Okay. Eight. A total of eight. Okay. And fourteen ninety for an hour. Yeah. yeah. And and it's, you know, the circles aren't regular. I wanted them to be really funky and wonky, and so it was just a super quick job of trimming those and, and grinding the edges, and then I just threw it in for a full fuse and drew on it. Mm. I love the, the awesome. Line. So it happens when you add graphic design with glass. <laughs> I, I want this as a print. I actually want that as a print and a frame. Okay, so. you got it. You know, there there is such good um, oh. clip art kind of relative to this stuff. If if you look up Zentangles <laughs> yes. and things like that, you can find little, little elements that you can borrow and steal and lift and Ooh. adapt and, and make your own. There's a lot of raw material that you yeah. can use to kind of get your juices going. I did a Zentangle enamel. See? I didn't even think And that. I used that in the enamels that I'm working on that um, you've seen um, some of the, the turquoise ones and the orange were all taken from. You posted that, I don't know how long ago, but it was months ago. And I went out there and I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. So I did that. Um, trying to to okay. do some stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? So. Oh yeah, so yeah, so that yeah. Was yeah a that... on on fine silver with an enamel over it. That's beautiful. 
Thanks. Yeah. yeah. All, all kinds of, you know, repeating patterns. I like those patterns. That, that you can borrow and improve upon and adapt. But I never mm -hmm. thought of adding lines. You know, we, I, I guess we had that class a while back where we added some embellishment with some lines, but nothing with patterns like mm -hmm. what you're doing. And I absolutely mm -hmm. Look, it's drying out. Yeah, it is. Can you see it? Yep. Here, let's get a side view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if you guys saw this, uh, we have a little box. It's a little switcher box that we're using right now to kind of switch back and forth between what, like a couple iPhones, a GoPro camera, and I think that's it. Yeah. And a computer. Yeah. So. Our technical director cat is a whiz. It's making my head hurt. But we'll get there. We're getting there. Yeah, we are. So I'll leave it surely. Yeah. And it's not easy. <laughs> Being green. <laughs> yeah, really. Green green. Fourteen twenty six. It's not easy being fourteen twenty six. That's another big. Oh my god! It's I think that's the one color that I actually know the number to. Besides French vanilla. Yeah. So can I share? How can I screen share, Cat? Oh, hold on. I have to enable it. And then give you a right. Let me switch back over to Zoom. There we go. Alrighty. It should let right. you do it. Give it a shot. Okay. So what do I say? Share? Yeah, go to share screen. It should be at the bottom. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, right. I wasn't in Zoom. I was in my gallery. So oh, hang on one second. Like All right, Zoom. <laughs> so I just go down to share screen at the bottom. This may not work. Hold on, Carrie. She's at the chalkboard. Yep, but you're, you're in the right direction. Okay. Bye, Lane. Thank down. you. I, I assume she's writing down. It's it's not easy being fourteen twenty six. And drawing a frog. And she's drawing a picture of a frog. Yeah, I can't see how to get to that. I think you should do a frog colored um, rubber chicken and say it's what? not. A That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, there we are. I think Aww. there's some, you know, some. Okay. So, so. All right, never mind. I cannot figure you that out. You can't do it. It doesn't. I have menu and are, are you um, on I don't see. Carry, or are you? Are no, you, I'm on my cell phone. Oh, then that's different altogether. Um, okay, forget it. Never mind. You've you've seen it. It's there, all good. Yeah, there may be something on the upper left, or I'm sorry, upper right hand corner. Maybe some little dots. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, no. It's all good. Not a problem. <laughs> I, we'll figure I, that out found, I, found, I found more, and um, it doesn't give me anything decent. I can raise my hand, I can chat, and I have meetings. Settings. You don't have share screen. No, but you. I think only the, uh, you have to make you kind of a admin sort of thing. To do I that, did? So. No, okay. I've actually... Uh, participants can share. It's just a matter okay. of it's it's just me. I might not be able to. Can you point your phone at it? Whatever you want to show us. No, it was in my gallery. Okay. Ah, uh, gotcha. Let me check yeah. Back. Yep. 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 So it'd be like sharing a you know what, a picture. What were you going to show us? Is it a work in It was. It, it was what I've been working on um, with enamels and you know, spread and so forth. it was only, it was just, it was an inspiration that because of what Kim posted several months ago and I went to this website and found and was like, oh, I could do that. I mean, I can draw these patterns and I drew them. So, and oh. then applied glass over top and, uh, and, you know, I've been trying to break apart enamel since then and it's, uh, 
um, very, um, it doesn't want to break apart. It's not like powder. Uh, what do you mean you're trying to break it apart? Yeah, what's that I mean? want it to dilute. Oh. Oh, gotcha. And, so, you know, to, 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 to diffuse, to dilute, to do something. And I thought if I put enough glass on top that it would alter the pattern that I had drawn in there oh, to start with. And make it spread. And if, yeah. And if you do it wet, if you do it wet, you get some distortion. If you, I've tried, I had a test tile that I did where I fired the enamel first and then piled stuff on. That hardly spread at all. It did some interesting things, but it didn't do what I was wanting. Uh, when I painted on with a lot of water, my enamel, then I got a more powdery look, but somehow brighter. So you know and why I, your enamel didn't spread, Carrie? Tell me. Because tell me. It, <laughs> <laughs> because it was on the bottom layer and it wasn't moving as much as your it, top layers were. It was on the bottom layer, yes, because I took a piece of tech and I drew. Yeah. And then I piled and yeah. I piled and I piled and I piled. Like some of these have been fired six times. So if you were and, to put yeah. enamel on your very top piece of Tecta it'll and spread. fire it, it'll spread and thin out. Yeah. But your, okay. bo your bottom layer is not going to move very much. But then that wouldn't, I don't know. I'll have to try that. I'm not, yeah, I'll have to try that. I did like, I took a paintbrush and um, wet down my enamel and did some design that way. And I uh -huh. liked it a lot. Uh -huh. And um what are you using for a medium for your dry enamel? Uh, it's it's um, not glass line paint. It's the color line. I'm using the. It's so I'm sorry. It's not enamel. It's paint. It's color line paint. I'm sorry. Oh okay. Okay. And yeah. And same thing. I use the the tip applicator to draw nice lines into do these geometric things and that's what didn't break down. And then I also mixed it with water uh, on a on a piece of float glass and used a paintbrush and painted on some interesting design and that broke apart. And I just it's on it's on some of my Facebook pages but I can't oh. find I, everything. I, have example I can show you too in a second. Oh, this is actually a, a slide from the cabochon class. Carrie, you took my cabochon class, right? I did. Yeah. Okay, so there was one of these slides that we talked about too, where there's tecta at the base, and anything yeah. that's lower in that stack stays intact. But then as you add stuff to the top, this was where we were saying you got more smearing. So yes. like it would spread out and whatever. But lower in the stack, they're more intact. Upper is where you're going to get that spreading. So yes, I just remember we that. just we didn't use paint. Yeah, and yeah, it was it was just something else to try, and I like it. And actually, I I am chopping up um, earrings and a cabochon out of that test tile that a lady's already bought. So <laughs> she loved it. So I mean, it's it's neat. It didn't do what I thought, and so I want to keep doing it to try and yeah. figure it out. I'll bet if you put three or four things in the kiln, Carrie, and you had one that was two layers high and three layers high and four layers high and five layers high, and you just scribbled on each top layer, you would see a tremendous change in how much they spread and thin out depending on how thin that glass gets. Okay. Right. I'm going I'm to try it. I mean, you, you've seen a lot of my stuff that's in this little testing mode that I'm uh -huh. in. And one of the things that you always say is, um, how many times have you fired it? And, oh, keep, do it, do it again. And so, I mean, there have been some things where the base glass, um, you know, I've taken, remember when you took all your stuff and did combings of it because right. you didn't like it? Okay. Right. So I took everything that I didn't like. And that's been, you know, that was a fired piece and everything and put 
glass shards on it. Oh, wow. All right. And so you've seen that. That's what I'm working on is to break stuff apart. And it also is telling me stuff like, well, if I've already fired this and, and I've got glass or I have powder or I have this or I have that, I mean, I have, I've got good notes on what, it does, and there's some things that I like, but um, it's, I just, I've kind of been in a, a static mode for a month and a half getting the studio done. I mean, my kiln isn't, I mean, it just got power yesterday. Right. But it's <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I have to remember what I'm doing. Oh, but good news, my little clamshell's coming. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, should be oh. here, there like, goes. Monday. <laughs> Monday. Kim Brill does the graphic design around here. <laughs> there's, there's the hey, detail. Kim, did you do Franklin's Barbecue? I have never had Franklin's Barbecue, no. No, no, no. did you do their design? I wish. <laughs> I yeah, wish. Because if you go out to their website, when I went out there to order food for the judges that are coming in that week, I um I said, oh my gosh, Kim did this. It's so Kimbrill. It is Kimbrill. Yeah. I think they stole it. You should sue. I think so too. Or we, yeah. yeah. See, that's totally a Kimbrill. Now the other one that is a total Kimbrill. I didn't well. originate this stuff, guys. This has been around since no, 1952. No. I know, but I thought that you. Yeah, you know, I mean, go look at it. It looks like you. I know. I love it. Well, here the other one, which is snooze. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Snooze. It's a it's a breakfast place here in Austin, but it was in Denver, and then they they yeah. said, oh my god. In fact, that right there is called the OMG French toast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Galaxy Cafe also has lovely identity. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, retro always works. Uh, it just it, reminds me retro of works. Yeah, Franklin's look yeah. like Kimbrell. I was like, yeah. all right, she did it. I gotta go look. Yeah. And Spoon I did. Flower, I searched for your name, fabrics, man. Spoonflower Fabrics. Just type oh, in the word retro. Yeah it's, yeah, it's too bad I can't persuade my clients. You know, who have absolutely nothing to do with anything like right. this. You know, my corporate clients don't want a retro website. They just, oh, man. they're not interested. I know. Yeah. I know. It's like, where's your adventure? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. You know, you could stop being so buttoned down. I know. Live a little. Like lighten up. Right? Light really? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if I can, come on. <laughs> mm. Oh my God. So, anyway, we're, where are we at? I think, I think we're at like 20. Any questions? Oh, okay. Anybody? Anybody? No, thank you.